All right. Everything on there? Good. Okay. Let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Also, let me open up Facebook here. Dress. Do, 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 do. There it is. Okay. Wait for it. All right, got Facebook, got Restream. Let's go with that. So we have uh, Zebra 2018 installed, but I need to do a little bit more housekeeping. Let me go over here to Preferences, and we're going to go to Config, Enable Customize. I'm going to hold down Control Alt because I'm working in such a small area of my screen here. I'm going to get rid of scroll, zoom, holding on Control Alt, actual half perspective, and BPR will keep around, floor will keep around, local will keep around, local symmetry, X, Y, Z, don't need frame, I guess we can keep around, uh, move, zoom, and rotate, don't need polyframe. Transparent, Ghost, Solo, and Exposed, I don't need. All right, then we'll customize off. Preferences, Store Config. Ooh, that's loud. Let me turn my sound down. Mm -mm -mm. There we go. Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, George, say, hey, Michael, what's your thoughts on Zuba 2018? It's great. It's amazing. Uh, where do we leave off? Do I need to, or what do you guys want to work on today? I don't have anything necessarily in, in, uh, necessarily planned. I mean, I guess what we're working on, oh, if, um, let me load up my usual links. I got a stream deck, but I haven't set any of it up yet, of course, so, um, let me pull up my usual stuff here, YouTube and streaming. Um, I should have had something scheduled pop up. Uploads, are those ready? Are those live? Um, I just uploaded a my Sculptures Pro. Uh, I guess we can just do this. Uh, yeah, Sculptures Pro and my... Whoa. Forgot I had music on them. Um, YouTube, YouTube. So... Um, oh, you know what? I guess we can take a look through this. So let's go ahead and load up Earthworm Jim. Uh, not recording Earthworm Jim. Streaming Earthworm Jim 04. So with Earthworm Jim here, um, let me go over here to Skin Shader 4. And if we turn off his eyeball layer. So this is uh, one of the things I did. There's a speed sculpt on my YouTube channel of this one in particular. Um, I guess I can link you to that. So if you go to Pavlovich Mike 2005, you'll see in the latest videos uh, we've got that set up. Um, if we go ahead and launch <clears throat> Keyshot, we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, how to give thickness to a 3D model. Um, you can extract, you can do a morph diff, you can do a cube mesh, you can do a um, kind of depends. You can give a thickness on Dynamesh if you want to do that. Kind of depends on what you're making. Give me a second here. Camtage recorder. There we go. So that was from my ZBrush. And I guess, yeah, we had an animation term table. So, um, you know, setting up your lighting in here, making 1920 by 480, applying your materials, applying your lighting. This one had, uh, let me go ahead and, uh, I guess I don't need to say anything. So this one in particular, if I back out here, you're going to see we have just, oh, we have a disc out here. Let me double click on this one and say visible to camera. So this one I had to just put in some custom lighting and a little bit of uh, a custom HDRI. So what you can do in these things is you can go on your model and you can click, uh, if we go to HDRI editor, you can say, I need a new, uh, add a pin. And you can go through here, it'll say control left mouse, 
button to add a highlight. Uh, so if you hold down control and like tap the back of his hand, that'll put a highlight on the back of his hand. And I'll give you this one, and then on, once you have this one selected, you can go through here, and you can make this circular or rectangular. You can change the color of it so that it matches whatever you need it to to make it warmer or cooler. Um, so kind of setting up a custom HDRI image, as well as just putting in a little bit of custom lighting, like I said, just basically putting in a disk up here that's set to um, watts and a little bit of a warmer light just to kind of match that Earthworm Jim image. And then go ahead and shooting my um, animation here. And what else we got? What else we got? Um, oh yeah, so for example, if you had a cylinder here and you go, let's go hold down control shift and delete and you go, okay, I need thickness of this model, Q mesh polygroup all, or you can go to extrude polygroup all, or if this thing was a, um, let's see if it was a dynamesh here, you can go down here to geometry, Dynamesh, and you can say, let's go ahead and throw in, turn on, I guess we need to turn on double. So if we Dynamesh this as a subtractive mesh, it'll put that in there. If we go ahead and say create shell, it'll go ahead and whatever that shell thickness is, it'll give you a thickness that way. So if we go through here and now we get rid of this, you can see we have a border around here. Um, one of the cooler ones is if we go back to where we just had a Dynamesh, you can mask something, and then you can go through here to your subtool extract, and you can say extract a thickness off of this thing. You can even do it on quite a large piece of this object. You hit extract. Um, you can make it thicker if you need to. So extract that out, accept, and then you can control drag to unmask, and now you've got this piece with the thickness. Um, let's say delete that. And if you ever need to, uh, I like to use this on like polyplanes doing capes and stuff, but you can go through here and you can do, let me see, make polymesh 3D. You got a plane like this and you want to give this plane thickness or uh, if you got cloth or something, you can do, instead of doing a Q mesh or a, or a um, geez, what am I looking for here? Not a Q mesh, but an extrude. You can do that. Um, you can also do a morph diff. So if you wanted to, like, say, push along these uh, normals here, you go to morph target, store morph target, and then you can go to deformation, inflate here. So now that we've stored a morph target, we've changed the vert position on any of these things. We can get create a more difference mesh. And up here you'll have a morph diff mesh, and that'll go ahead and give you the result of the original morph target plus uh, the new one. So if you want to see something that's a little bit um, more obvious, you can just go through here. And again, any of these times these vert positions change from the original morph target. If you want to see the original morph target, just go down here to morph target and hit switch. So here's our original, here's our morph diff here. And then you can just case hit uh, create diff mesh. And then up here, there's your diff mesh. So you've got a backside, a side plane, and then an upper, upper side there. <clears throat> um, cool. All right, thanks everybody for showing up. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Cool, cool. Um, show us the new 2018 magic. Uh, that should be pretty, pretty quick demo. I guess I can get rid of that off my screen. Let's see. Um, 2018. Actually, you know what? I need to bring up my 2018 notes here. Let's see. Google Drive. Uh, I got this open. Got this open. Uh, oh, sorry for everybody in Discord. I tried to load it up at home, and my two-factor authentication didn't work, so I'm going to have to see what's up with that. I have it on my phone. I have it set up, and it was like, you don't have the right code. So, there's that. Uh, so, what's new in 2018? It's the uh, Sculptress mode. That's right. So, Sculptress mode is, if you go take this body for instance, and this body is zero meshed. So if we start sculpting in Sculptress mode, uh, which is on right here, so you can do uh, activate Sculptress mode as the backslash button. Uh, so right above your enter key, you can toggle that on and off here. Uh, once you have that on, 
uh, it's going to say, oh, we have subdivision levels on here, so it goes ahead and turns it off for you because it's going to assume you want to maintain your subdivision levels, which usually I do. Um, <clears throat> if you ever don't want to, you can delete lower, turn on sculptress mode, and then as you're sculpting on here, as you make your brush bigger, let's go ahead and turn off our lazy mouse. You're going to see it's going to automatically tessellate. Let's go to his face. That would be a little bit more interesting. So we'll delete lower on that. Um, so we can go through here and we can start sculpting and it'll automatically tessellate as we're moving. On the move brush itself, it won't, but you can go down here to your snake hooks. Well, you won't have those down here, um, but you can set up a custom uh, interface down here. If you need to throw anything in here, we can just go to here to preferences, custom, enable customize, hold down control alt. And uh, if we want to use clay build up a lot, hold down control alt, and we'll just drag clay build up down here. And then you can go preferences, turn off enable customize. Uh, you'd want to make sure you go to uh, config, press preferences, config, store config, and that'll go ahead and store your interface the way you have it. Um, so you go down here to snake hook, and now you can just snake hook to your tart's content. Uh, if you make your brush size smaller, it's going to be more tessellated here. If you make it bigger, it's going to be less tessellated. And of course, you can hold down shift and you can smooth things apart or get rid of them completely. Um, and as you smooth things, it's going to go ahead and interactively update that tessellation on the fly. Now again, move brush won't, uh, but snake hook will. So here's the old snake hook brush, everybody's favorite snake hook brush. Uh, snake hook 2 pulls along the surface normal here. So you can kind of wiggle it right at you. And then uh, snake hook sphere uh, passes a shape through there, again along that surface normal. And then uh, snake cactus is the, let me turn off poly from here, and let's go ahead and hold down shift and turn off our colors here. That'll go ahead and pull through. So as we're using the snake hook, it'll kind of pull along uh, your path with this alpha. So if you ever want to change that, obviously you can go through here and pick any alpha you want or load your own alpha. So that is how I made his arms, if I remember correctly, and also how I made his head. It's more of a concepting tool for me. I don't know that I'd want to use this in production if I had geometry that I liked, uh, but if you're concepting, it's good. And also, one of the benefits of it is it's not like Dynamesh where, uh, let me see, if I let's go into Move Brush, Auto Masking, and we'll go down here to Topological. So if I pull Let's change that range down to, say, 1.5. So uh, if I pull this lip down and this lip up so that they're really close, uh, if I wanted to just do arbitrary sculpting on this mesh, I can. I can just go through here and use my um, standard brush, and it's tessellating on the fly, so I can smooth this out and uh, build this up. Uh, but it's not like Dynamesh in that if I tried to Dynamesh this thing, Let's say uh, Dynamesh, I don't know what resolution I'm working at. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and crank up the resolution a little bit. So if I wanted to just change this geometry, let's say, oh, you know what? In fact, let's do this. Let's go over here to Z plugin, decimation master, preprocess current. And this is all called demo soldier because that's what I started out with when I made this thing. There we go. So uh, let's go ahead and turn off our polyframe here. So we've got our goopy earthworm gym worm head. So if we go over here to Decimation Master and we say, let's decimate this down to like 10K and then decimate. Uh, also, let's change this back to Matcap Gray. So that's a little bit low. Let's say 50K. Okay, let's say 75K. Maybe 125. I'm trying to get it as low as I can without uh, losing... Uh, too much information. So I think that's fine. So uh, we've got geometry that looks like this. It's a lot of triangles. It's going to be really difficult to sculpt on. Um, and this is something you would do just to keep your file sizes down or, you know, instead of having a gigantic... Actually, you know what? Let's go lower just for demonstration purposes. Let's at least 50k. Um, instead of having a uh, overly resol... you know, a uh, Dynamesh with a lot of resolution, you could go ahead and just decimate this down. And now what you can do is you can go right on top of this with Sculptress mode turned on, and it'll go ahead and allow you to just sculpt right along here, just tessellating on the fly, obviously. So you can go through here, and you can clean these up. We can go in here with our Damien Standard brush, I think. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like so. And you can go through here and just start sculpting again. And again, because we have uh, the automatic tessellation, you can go ahead and you pull these up, or everybody's favorite, let's see, brush, 
uh, what do they call that? Spin spiral. And this is going to automatically test light on the fly as well. So if we go through here, we can put a ton of spirals on here. And you can do, and because it's automatically tessellating, you don't have to sit here and redynamesh and redynamesh. It'll go ahead and tessellate on the fly. In fact, if we take this one, we can just spiral these and then hold down Alt and spiral this way and spiral this way and spiral this way. Um, and then, of course, you can smooth this all back. The settings for this brush are going to be up here in Stroke, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Sculptures Pro. So you've got your adaptive size, your combined. Um, I think Paul already did this. I need to go back and watch these um, the intro video. I got my notes here from the beta, but um, I'm going to try and record this weekend all the very the specifics and try to come up with use cases for Project Primitive and stuff like that. That would walk you through it. Um, so there's Sculptures Pro. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you, you can't you can't lose. So let's say um, <laughs> we got a really interesting looking work earthworm gym now. And oh, that's the other thing I was going to mention. So with Sculptures Pro here, um, these things are still separate. So even though we're sculpting, and it's obvious, but um, it's kind of like Dynamesh, but you don't, you're, these things aren't going to stick together. So when I did my, um, and the other thing that came that should have popped up on my YouTube channel was, what would it be called? It would be called uh, Octopus Sphere Challenge. So uh, I pulled this octopus out of a single sphere here, and basically, let's go, I guess we can watch this. Um, so again, go to my YouTube channel here, we got Earthworm Jim, and the making of Earthworm Jim here, let me turn that down. Um, you know, you start out with the base body, you pull out, uh, I guess we can, you know, it's only three minutes, let's watch it together. So there's the key shot turnaround, uh, starting with the... What do you call that? Demo Soldier, and then using Project Primitive to kind of make those shapes in there, and then using Project Primitive to make his muscles, and then doing just a little bit of sculpting with the Sculptures Pro, pulling out with the uh, Snake Hook to grab his arms, and then using Project Primitive through those to make the muscles again, just more muscles, and then adding an insert mesh for his hands, because I'm lazy, and then just sculpting these basic shapes into place. And again, you know, sculpting in symmetry so that you can do half the work and then going through and posing it later. And then with Spotlight, going ahead and pulling through those shapes with Sculptures Pro. And then using Project Primitive again for the eyeballs and the mouth just to get the basic shapes in there. Popping some eyeballs in there, moving stuff around, always using the camera to snap it back to the Spotlight position. Project Primitive, Project Primitive, Project Primitive. And then on this one, oh yeah, we can talk about um, the twist functionality in the curve mode. Let's talk about that for a second. Uh, so we go back to 2018, and we take a cylinder here, and let's go to make poly mesh 3D. Brush, uh, you know what, let's do it. something more exciting than that. Let's go more exciting than a belt, like a different type of belt. Uh, let's say necklace here. Okay, so there's our necklace. Um, actually, now that I think about it, give me a second here. Hold on. Um, so there's elastic and liquid settings on here. So if we go over here to our um, stroke panel where all of our uh, curve functions live. Um, so here's all of this, and then we have elastic and liquid on here. Um, and then the one I wanted to talk about was the, uh, so you can smooth the curve, and then you can hold down control and rotate it across a point here. So you hold down control and move. Let's see if you start moving. Yeah, you can now twist along a point on your curve. Uh, it, so basic curve brush, if you have it, a if it's a blue, um, icon, if you have the curve drawn out, you can go through here and you can move this around and you can make the blue size bigger. If you go over here and make the red size bigger, it's going to make your curve stroke bigger. If you make it smaller, it'll make it smaller here. Um, so as your curve size is bigger, you hold down control, it'll go ahead and twist along here um, with that held down. Just wanted to... make sure I cover that. Um, 
and again, uh, just going through here and just doing the basic block out and then using transpose master, we can skip some of this, I suppose. Pose them out, pose them out. Oh yeah, and then here's the project primitive for the uh, little sci-fi gun he has. So you start with a little egg shape and then you use project primitive to just kind of get this thing tapered and then beveled and all these little pieces in here. And then all the other new deformers in there that you can use. I still, you know, you can use Z-Remesh in there now and you can Dynamesh in there as well. Sculpting everything, getting the eyes all placed up. And then making it so that we have the lens of the eye as a separate layer that's a little bit bigger than the inside of the eye, which is concave with the little pupil in the back to get the reflections right. Um, using our curve helper to make those rings that we've gone over before. What else? Oh yeah, and then this is just the general sculpting, and then eventually I, I tend to just Z-Remesh everything just, for, just to get a really nice surface. But like we've covered, if you want to just use uh, Sculptors Pro, and then blah blah blah, you do your poly paint and all that good stuff, and then throw in the key shot, and then set it all up. Blah 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 blah. There you go. Um, for the other one, this is the one we were talking about with Sculptors Pro. You can just start from a sphere, and then because again, it's not Dynamesh, you're allowing these pieces of the geometry to not um, necessarily have to interact with anything under it, so you can start with uh, this mass of stuff and move the stuff around and then smooth it, and you're, as long as you have polygroups and you're keeping everything organized, um, you can interact with those surfaces separately, or I guess you can turn on topological as well, and that'll only mess with the uh, later, the end parts of the tentacles. So uh, anyway, make, it, make an octopus. So over here, if we have this one here, See, this is all just one mesh, just pulled from a, um, did we have eight legs? One, two, three, four, five, six. I think we only have seven legs. Oops. So he's an injured octopus. He doesn't really have eight legs, but we could pretend. Uh, one thing we can do is let's say we want another leg coming. I'm trying to see if I can squirrel one out of here. Let's say we're going to mask this area right in here. Actually, let's go ahead and just, um, now, you know what, I, I like to keep these polygroups, so I'm going to go ahead and mask a little area in here to start my new tentacle. So we're going to say uh, Control w and then now that we have this area, we can mask it, and then unmask it. And we, again, we can go through here with our snake sphere, and if we just want to pull straight out at our camera, we can just grab this piece here and start using um, Sculptors Pro. And because I made it a polygroup at the beginning, now we have a completely new polygroup here. So now I can use my snake hook and I can move this thing around and it'll tuck underneath, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll stay, um, it's, you know, obviously going to test light on the fly here. You can go through here with your inflate brush, give it a little bit more mass as we go. And as I'm pulling it around these other objects, we can, now we can use the move brush here. Let's go ahead and turn off topological. Mm -hmm. Stroke, the plug in. Brush. There we go. Ah, we can smooth this out. Now, uh, if I'm smoothing it out, I'm going to want to make the brush size a little bit smaller because I don't want to lose that much resolution. Uh, you can also go into your brush, um, sorry, it would be your um, Stroke Sculptures Pro, and you have um, that turned on. So uh, you can change your undivide ratio down to one if you want to keep it the same. And again, I'm going to be doing videos on this stuff, or you can go to Pixlogic's channel, and uh, they have the basic walkthrough of all these functionality. I'm like, really showing you anything new here today. So now we've got this tentacle, which is all separate. So if we unmask this, um, or you know, we can isolate this still because we have our own polygroup. So we can just go through here, and again, these things stay separate because it's Sculptors Pro, it's not Dynamesh. Um, you can use Dynamesh in conjunction with Sculptors Pro if you'd like. So there's there's that one there. Cool. Uh, okay, let's see. Let me catch up here. Um, if I miss anything, I apologize. How to create a UW map. Um, you can do a UV map down here underneath your... What am I looking for here? UV map. Create. If you want to do, um, if you're doing Greebly type stuff, I'll use these tiles down here. If you were doing anything more specific, 
like for instance, this body, can we undo back to where we had, yeah. So we can go to subdivision level one here, and they got polygroups on here. So this one, really simply, Z plugin, UV master, <clears throat> let's do symmetry, no, it's not symmetrical. Let's do polygroups, um, you can enable and control painting if you want to, I'm just gonna head and, I'm gonna go ahead and say, do what you wanna do, ZBrush, and then we'll go to uh, work on clone, so that we have no subdivision history on here, so we can just copy the UVs later, so we'll go ahead and say unwrap, and that'll go through, and look at your polygroups here, you can make more polygroups if you wanna cut it along a specific seam, or you can use control painting to say, I wanna attract here and not uh, UV that, then we can hit flatten, there's our UVs, we can unflatten, then we can hit copy UVs, we can go back to our original object here, and we can say paste UVs, and now this object, if we go down here, uh, we have a delete UV, which means we have UVs on it now, you can go to texture map, you can do new from UV check, and then you're going to see your UVs are fine, there's no red areas, which means there's no overlapping, if you do new from UV map, That'll go ahead and put a gradient across here so you can see where your seams are really easily and make sure everything's okay. So there's our UVs, pretty straightforward. Um, contact in the tools menu, that is a three point contact. Oh man, I haven't, I haven't used that in forever. Let me see if I still remember how to use that. Um, so polymesh 3D and then, um, contact. So you have one, two, three point contact stores third contact. So if you have, let me append a cylinder. Oh, this is going to be, this, this might be embarrassing. Um, think, think, think. Let me see if it actually has, so if you have uh, stores first contact, hold down control. Uh, C1 button will establish the first contact point that ZBrush used to maintain the distance between the adjacent subtools. Allow rigid movement between subtools. Uh, establish a combat move scale and rotate to activate transpose. Draw a point on the first tool tool and drag out the transpose line to target mesh. Oh, right. Okay. I think I remember what this is now. Um, so instead of using transpose master, what you can do is you can store contact points between two uh, pieces here. So if we just go say we want this one and this one this in the glove here, hit W, hit Y to go into transpose mode here, and we can go, um, we want three contact points, so let's see if this will work. Uh, uh, so here to here, C1, um, I don't know, here to here, C2, and then here to here, C3, strength 100%, apply, and now uh, let's see if this what this does. Uh, I, 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 I don't remember how to use it. Um, you'll have to look that up. <laughs> Sorry about that. I did a video on it six years ago, seven years ago. My old E3D stuff. Um, yeah, you know, there's a good way of keeping UVs while working at H geometry. Um, yeah, Paul. Paul did an HD geometry walkthrough on the Pixelogic channel. So if you go to the Pavlovich workshop, which is what we're doing right now, you can go over here to Pixelogic ZBrush. And in the videos here, um, videos, 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 here's everybody's videos. Um, in here there's a, let me see if I can just do, I don't use HD geometry, so I'm certainly not the uh, sculpting in more details. Chapter eight. Oh uh, no, this is a year ago. Mm. Somewhere in here, there was a um, there was a Paul Gabriel where he walked through all the HD. Um, uh, you know what? I guess I can find that. Let me see. Let me go to my here, and let's say that would be under. CG. Z brush. Oh, I got a lot of stuff in here. Oh boy. Um, 
waiting for it to load. HD mode, okay, so... This one. So, Paul Gabriel, did you know that live episode 15? Let me link you to that. And he will cover everything HD geometry related that I have no clue about because I don't use it. But good luck with that. Um, cool. Uh, Hannibal says, uh, my guy was told it's now very easy to sculpt a goatee and stubbled beard because of Sculptures Pro. Would it be easy to explain? I think so. Um, so if we have a face and we have dynamic subdivisions, although let's subdivide this up some more. We'll delete lower and we'll go ahead and delete hidden. So do a quick mirror and weld. So while we're sculpting on here with Sculptress mode turned on, I'm going to go ahead and DynaMesh. It'll update. So I suppose if you wanted to like spray with an alpha, it should um, go ahead and update dynamically. So I suppose if you had like a stubble brush, it would uh, give you all the resolution in the world. So the difference being with Sculptress mode on, and let's let's make this a little bit more obvious. So let's let's hit reconstruct. Uh, we put triangle in there. Hold on. We're going down to, to say four. So I'll delete higher and delete lower. Mirror one. Okay. So um, you're seeing as I'm sculpting with this spray stroke with this alpha on here, I'm getting pretty high resolution. If I turn sculptor mode off and try to do that, it's picking up the resolution of the object, which isn't very high, so you're not going to be able to get a whole lot of stubble on there. Um, but of course, with sculptor mode, while it's automatically tessellating, it's just putting in detail where you need it. So you're going to see all of those details being built into the face now. Um, it also allows you to work a little bit. So in order to get the same effect, what we'd have to do is, in the old method, Go control D, control D, control D. And now we are working at uh, 8.3 million and sculptor mode off. Now we can finally begin to kind of get that resolution. Um, but now we have an entire 8 million polygon sculpt. So if I only want a detail here, I'm wasting an awful lot of detail back here. Uh, did I bring his whole body back? Oops. Well, I mean, that's still, that's still a good example. Um, but what you could do instead is have it at this resolution. And then uh, with Sculptor Smut turned on, now you can just put stubble where you need it as opposed to having to subdivide everything up really, really high. And as far as the goatee thing, that would just be, um, you know, snake hook. Or a spiral or whatever, whatever you want to put in here. So you would just sculpt it. Yeah, that's real nice. Or snake hook. So, there you go. And like I said before, snake hook 2, it'll pull along that surface normal. Uh, if I remember correctly, that would be under, uh, under brush, probably. Let me think. Again, I'm not an expert at these tools just yet. I'm gonna, I'll record this weekend, and that'll remind my brain where everything's at. Uh, Sculptors Pro under brush size, uh, you can enable it, you can use global, uh, if you don't want to use global you can set those here, um, buh, 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 buh. I'll have to I'll have to remember where that stuff is. Uh, are you ever going to stream in 1080p? Um, yeah, I guess I could, the only reason I don't is because OBS tells me not to whenever I'm going to certain platforms, I could do it in 4k if you guys want. Um, that might be a little overkill for this particular channel. Uh, yeah, next time I'll I'll re up. Next time I'll go into my settings and just change it to uh, 1080p. Cool. Um, what is the difference between dynamic and dynamic? I'm not sh uh, in rel relationship to what. Uh, Axel says, where do you see Sculptors Pro being used mostly? For me, it would just be concept sculpting. I wouldn't use it. Uh, because I have to be more careful about in production what the topology is to an extent um, for organic stuff, I guess. The things that are going to be animated, I wouldn't use it. I would use it to concept sculpt 
uh, just as an alternative to Dynamesh or in conjunction with Dynamesh, um, allowing me to have Dynamesh-like properties in areas like, if we go over here to our, I guess we can use the demo head. So for example, F S uh, delete lower, turn all that off. So we've got a mouth here and we want to just go through here and sculpt anything that's close together with Sculptress Mode on. We, we can kind of get some Dynamesh-like stuff going um, without having to resort to, and let's go back down here to Move Brush, Auto Masking here, Top Logic. So, let's go ahead and pinch this down. Ooh, now pinch is going to test late on the fly, and that's fine if that's what you wanted to do because, again, it's not going to pull these things together. So you still have control um, over that. So that's cool. And you can also, like I mentioned before, you can go through and you can, let's turn it a smooth, stronger here. You can go, oh, you know what? Did I mess that brush up? Yeah, I did. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Comma key, brush. Um, I mean, we could just turn on the properties for this, but let's go ahead and choose smooth, stronger wherever it is, there it is. Okay, and hold down shift, brush, save as. We're gonna go to 2018, brush presets. Uh, the startup, brush presets, let's move stronger. All right, so next time I restart, that'll be correct. So, um, and uh, you know, being able to put detail in where you need it and not have to have a bunch of detail around here. So again, going back over here to the plugin, Decimation Master, Preprocess Current. Now this is all like, well, how would you use all these new tools right now in your production? And I would go, well, I don't know, like this. Um, it's one of those things where there's some stuff in there and I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know that I would use this in production, but then a year later I'm like, I can't live without this in production. So that's always subject to change. So let's say 20K, let's say 70K. So again, you can kind of dictate where you want your details to go. So here's, um, here it is kind of just reduced. And then if you want to go through, like we were talking about earlier with the stubble or going in here and making eye bag wrinkles, you can just dynamically subdivide-ish. Kind of, you can tessellate in these areas and um, you can go through here and you can hold down shift to smooth and you can build up resolution in just these areas that you want. So here we've got the decimated area and then in here we've got all the detail in the world because it's just being dynamically updated on the fly. And it's not sticking together like Dynamesh would. If you had overlapping things or things that are close together, uh, it'll keep them apart. You don't got to worry about that. So that's nice. So just kind of, it, it's just gonna, a thing that kind of frees you up. Um, Hersh says, what's the difference between dynamic and Dynamesh? So, um, well, like we've been talking about, I think if you mean Sculptures Pro and Dynamesh, that's what we're doing. Um, the Dynamesh specifically, is there anything in there? This is dynamic. I don't remember. Geometry, Dynamesh, no. So Sculptures Pro and Dynamesh, those are the differences. If I understand you correctly. Dynasty, thanks for showing up. Thanks for the kind words. Uh, the Druku says, contact is probably made obsolete by the multi-transpose function in Gizmo 3D. Um, I think so. Yeah, I, I, I haven't had a, I haven't come up with anything that would be like, oh, I wish I could use contact for this, uh, which is probably why I don't remember how to use it anymore, but I could be wrong. Cool, cool. Good, good, good. Um, that's why I says, hey, Mike, I'm trying to make a military overcoat and don't know how to roll it up. Could you help me? Um, that one might be a little bit trickier. You can, what I like to do when I'm doing, um, let's take this earthworm gym here. So let's give him a jacket that kind of just has a fold over here. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna mask, let's hit, um, you know what, let's use, let's make this faster, mask lasso. So I'm gonna take all this here. And then we're gonna, actually he's too muscly. 
He's got too much going on. Um, let's take, let's do this. All right, so we've got a jacket here. Um, let's go ahead and duplicate this off. Hit Control W to make that a poly group. Isolate this, delete hidden. Let's go ahead and clean up these edges here. So I'm gonna go down here to masking, bar border, mask by features, Control tap to invert, and we will do a polish by features open circle. So now when we zero mesh this thing, we can say half, adapt to size down to zero, and we have a new jacket. Now if I wanted to, and let's keep going half. There we go. So if I wanted, and you know what, let's go ahead and just inflate. There's my jacket. So if I wanted to, you know, put on a collar or sculpt this in any direction, what I would probably end up doing is, number one, if you're going to give this thing thickness, you can extrude. I, I would tend to cap stuff like this, but if we're doing something thin that needs to fold, um, I want to do a marvelous designer maybe, um, but also don't do a Q-mesh, do an extrude polygroup all. If you do a Q-mesh, all these little pieces in here will stick together. Um, extrude, they won't. They'll stay separate. So that's one thing you can do right off the bat. And then if you wanted to like roll this sleeve up, for example, you could say polygroup this poly loop, and then you can hold down uh, Q-mesh, polygroup all, Actually, you know what, let's start, um, let's go into solo mode here. I'm gonna start alt painting on this, tap shift, and then you can start uh, painting through here if you wanna change that, but it's probably faster just to go through here and just polygroup these things. So now what we can do is we can Q-mesh polygroup all, hold down control, actually, let's not, yeah, it's still gonna stick together. So here's what I'm gonna do now. Let's duplicate this, isolate this, delete hidden. And now that this is a separate piece, we can go ahead through here, Q-Mesh Polygroup All, hold down Shift to pull along the surface normal, and then give that some thickness. So if we go back in here to Solo, now you can bridge these two things uh, together, and that'll give you a piece of uh, mesh that comes up here and kind of folds over. Just like when we're doing um, BTO, Topology Brush Straps, you can go through here, and you can make a strap. It's like, okay, here's my strap. Split mass points. And then if I wanted to fold this strap over, actually, let's go ahead and make this a little bit thinner. It's a little thicker than I thought it was going to be. So q mesh Polygroup, I'll hold down Shift. Alt, paint these things, uh, pull this up, hold down Control. And now if I want to bridge these two, we can just do Delete, Single Poly. And now we can go Bridge, two holes, here to here, and then pull this out. And now we have a strap that folds over. Um, if you want to merge these things down, you can use the topological brush or you can go in here to brush topology and keep topological on and you can mush these things together or you can hold down, um, let's turn back on our hit Y to go back into gizmo mode. Uh, you can use transpose for this too, but you can hold down control and drag, it'll con it'll mask along the topology of your object. So now we can mask out this back side here and you can push these things together and then we can go through here and you can do like a crease poly group, dynamic turned on. Um, let's go ahead through here and go to like a crease, edge loop complete, hold down alt. And if we want to crease these corners here, we do sheet D and shift D and we can go ahead and crease this up. So now we have a strap that folds over on itself like so and we can do a crease tolerance, crease level three, smooth so do a four, et cetera, et cetera. So kind of going through and modeling your clothing as opposed to trying to sculpt something that folds and it looks like go in and model it, save yourself the headache. Um, in fact, uh, let me think if I have something in particular here. Um, yeah, I think I do. So for example, if you go to this commander here, Actually, you know what? I have something very specific for this. So on this commander, go through, and you know you got this sloppy boot block out. That's just a concept sculpt, right? Um, when I go to here's the boot tutorial specifically, you might like this. So instead of trying to sculpt all of this stuff, you can sculpt the basic um, blobby concept, and then you can go through here and you can kind of rebuild some of the stuff, and then on the folds and anything that needs to fold over, that's all modeled, box modeled in, and then you subdivide, and then, or you can use Sculptors Pro, and you can go through here and just add wrinkling where you need to, as opposed to trying to sculpt in a bunch of cloth. That's just, a, that's just more difficult for me in particular, but your mileage may vary on that too. Cool. Thanks for showing up, Will. Um, 
uh, yes. Um, yeah, the curve examples. Let's see, brush, curve, and again, I'm not I'm not a super duper expert just yet on the new tools. I've I've played with them. That's about the extent of my. Um, and it's not like I can't do it. It's just a. Um, I don't want to do give you guys a bad demo, but you know you got curve mode here. There we go. So we got curve mode here, and again, like I said, you can make the draw size bigger, big, uh, bigger, smaller, and then you can go through here, and you can start modifying these things with uh, control dragging now. Um, you also have elastic. Uh, that would be under not the plugin here. Now we turn on elastic mode, which is on. Um, elastic mode is enabled. Curve brush will have the uh, capability to add curve points along the curve. Um, so you can go through here, and um, so as you can see, as I'm pulling out with elastic, it's adding. It's not pulling this end down. It's just giving me the ability to kind of add uh, stuff in here. And then uh, liquid uh, have the ability, capacity, to add points along a curve, and also to subtract curve points. So if we turn on liquid here, that'll go ahead and kind of smooth out. It's still maintaining my end start and end points here, so you can kind of go through here. And you can also hold down shift to smooth the curve out now. And like I mentioned, oops, that's uh, sculptures mode. And also like I mentioned here, um, you can hold down control and twist along a curve. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm snapping this curve here, so let's go ahead and just tap off here. Tap off. Uh, okay, fine. Stroke. Curve mode. Delete. There we go. And we have topological on. Oh boy. Let's make myself sick going through these menus. Brush. R off. Uh, topological. There we go. So there we go. That one's taken out of there. Pretty straightforward stuff. Um, I am trying out the new 2018 version. Any tips on working with photogrammetry in ZBrush, specifically environment reference? Yeah, well, environment reference, no. Um, like terrain and um, like ground cover, not really. Uh, I, I am getting back into reality capture in just a bit. Um, in the meantime, I do, oh yeah, so I do have photogrammetry basics here. I don't know if that's of any interest to you, but here's, uh, I want to say... There's a lot of ZBrush cleanup stuff in here as far as going through the process and using Reality Capture and PhotoScan and ZBrush in t conjunction with each other. I'm going to have some Houdini stuff soon. Uh, Will says, Sculptures Pro, poly paint question, painting fine detail on costumes, say Spider-Man's web is a way to go now to paint with detail with Sculptures Pro. Yeah, the same thing is, that's a good point. So the same thing when sculpting detail is you can now sculpt uh, with poly paint. So let's say our body is in that detail, so we'll delete higher. So here's our body. Uh, we can go through here and we have sculptures turned on so we can get more detail where we need to. Um, same thing applies for poly paint. So if we turn on RGB uh, only, and we start coloring on here, if we turn um, this off, let's turn to change a red color here. You see how it's picking up uh, just the underlying resolution because that's where the vertices are. Um, if we turn on sculptures mode, now it's a much finer line. In fact, if we make this smaller, it's even finer. If we make this smaller, it's like microscopically detailed poly paint because um, it has uh, autom uh, dynamic tessellation turned on. So now if I tried to go back through here and turn this off and use a brush this small to poly paint, it's going to be like beep, boop, beep. And then it goes back in here where, the, where it was tessellated earlier. So yeah, here's the native resolution. And then here's the sculptures resolution. Super nice, right? Uh, Babu the stake says dynamic smoothing. Yeah, that's just part of the part of the algorithm here. So if I make my smooth brush really big, it's going to tessellate this area. So if you wanted to um, get rid of any sections really quickly, you can just hold down shift to smooth this stuff out and it'll smooth it back. In fact, I can get rid of like all this at once very quickly as opposed to you know slicing this or hiding it and deleting it and closing holes and dynameshing and stuff you can just go through and smooth it out 
like so. That's kind of cool looking character. Hey, Regen, thanks for showing up. Um, actually, says Michael, when I start surface noise, my ZBrush loses 4K scaling. Oh, uh, that I, off the top of my head, I don't know. That's about my pay grade. That's a tough one. I'm not sure about that. Um, no, I don't know what's going on there. Sorry about that. Uh, will you update your custom UI for ZBrush? Yeah, I should, shouldn't I? Let me make a note of that. Custom UI 2018. Yeah, I'll throw that up on Gumroad. Cool, hey everybody. Oh, you know what? I've been completely neglecting Facebook. Uh, anybody on there today, this morning? It's kind of hard to tell. Oh, yep, I am. Um, um, um. Comments, comments, comments. Are these from today? Let me see. Hold on. Give me a second. I'm bad at the Facebook thing. I got Restream IO up. Um, I think these are from a, a previous video because I'm not that far into my stream yet. Cool. Yeah, and these videos will be posted later. Alrighty. So. Hard to tell what's going on Facebook. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, uh, okay, keep going through here. Hey, everybody. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Um, AKC asks, hey there, you're absolutely amazing at this. Uh, I don't know if I'm amazing. How long have you been modeling sculpting for and how often do you use sculpt model use 3D programs? So I used to use them for a long time. Uh, I, just recently, I haven't, I haven't sculpted a lot lately. I've been more in Nodeland, in Unreal, and Houdini. Um, but as far as just sculpting, I mean, I've been using ZBrush for about 12 years now, I want to say. Uh, 3.1 was probably where I started using ZBrush a lot, but at Ringling, when I went to college, I was using 2.5. Way back, whenever they first introduced the 3D sculpting capabilities, um, and, and I think the material, it had like one, it had like one or two materials I'm going to say it looked like this, <laughs> something like this, and uh, you could mask, and uh, there was no modeling. There was, there was a few, there's the basic sculpting brushes, and that was about it. It's come a long way since then. Uh, Space Review did for 2018 is pretty cool. Yeah, um, that was, let me see, I used some of the, let me see if I can pull that up here. Actually, you know what we should probably do? Preferences, initialize ZBrush clean some of this out. There we go. Document, range, load tool, the ship. Um, wait, that would be the skimmer. ZBrush, 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 ZBrush. Maybe not. Maybe it's under ship. Hmm. Hmm. I did a bunch of ships, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I guess that's something we could talk about. That might be fun. So underneath uh, ZBrush here, let me see if I have one that just has them all loaded up. Okay, so I guess this one will work. So here it is, ready to get baked. And if you go to my art station page again, or to my YouTube channel, uh, we have the auto game dev tool set. So this was made completely in ZBrush. Let me turn off this, and this is like a, a concept sketch of what a ship could really look like. It's not box model or anything, it's just kind of pieces thrown together and some basic functionality figured out, but nothing really beyond that. But it's it's still, there's still plenty going on here, and it's all separated out. So if you turn off line here, you're going to see all these pieces are separate. So you could, um, or like I mentioned in, before in the video, you can go through here, and I made it so that when we were playing with these things or we game res it and we put it into production. Um, I left a lot of things separate so that the animators could go in and say slide these pieces out here like so. You know, so if they needed to like push this thing in or flare these things out or do these flaps as the 
ships adjusting or um, these things can also kind of pop out and around and up and then you've got the weapons that can go these things can pop out oh, also these um, little hover pads can roll if you need them to um, all of these things if you hit W and you turn on this multi transpose select multiple tools here you can hold that control shift and you can select let's see W there you go. You can select multiple. So now you can go through here and you can move multiple subtools here. So like this can collapse back in through this area here. So we can go like through here. And then even if we hold down control shift and then alt, oops, looks like this one's might be masked. Let's hold down. Are they separate? Um, hold down control shift and we'll grab W. There we go. You can grab these ones here. And then we'll hold down control shift and get rid of these ones. And now we can move these ones back. So this can kind of, kind of collapse up in there. So a uh, little bit of modularity in there. And then the game resing stuff was all done in Houdini and painting paint stops and stuff like that. Uh, but you can check that out if you're so inclined. Um, but yeah, the basic concepting of that was really just throwing together pieces. If I go back here to like feedback one, They just end up looking like this, um, and I'll do a whole whole thing on on this ship when I get a second, just to kind of go through what it started out as, and then uh, I'll, I'll do a art station post, I suppose. Um, double NT, I don't really remember what this one was called. Scatter refine. Maybe it's this one. Yeah. So here's here's what the original looked like. Just kind of these basic shapes. And then we can delete all these. Delete all these. Yeah, so here's this. And you know what? Let's delete all that. So from here, uh, where I got everything blocked out, and then just going through and refining until you get to this point. And uh, you could still, you know, this thing is pretty much decimated down, but if you did want to put more detail on here, like if you tried to sculpt on this thing in particular, you're going to see trying to sculpt along here where these triangles are is going to be pretty much impossible. So I'll turn on Sculptor's Mode. And now uh, let's go into Solo Mode here, turn off our lines, and let's turn off Lazy Radius. Oh, you know what? Do we have auto masking on for anything in particular? Standard brush here. Let's hold on shift to smooth first. Because, yeah, when you get these long triangles, see, there's no vertices in here. So, you know what might be easier? If you have, if you know you have a lot of vertices along here, let's go ahead and just do a slice along here. So, we have a vert in there to at least allow us to go through and tessellate. And now we can just hold down shift to smooth. There you go. Much better. And now you can go through here and sculpt all you need. So, I don't know, maybe that's something you could use. Um, you ever worked with Rhino? I used Fusion 360. I'm trying to get into Moi 3D soon-ish. We'll see how that goes. Uh, thoughts on polygroup at GPU rendering, so allow wonder if it'll allow large meshes. Um, yeah, it should. Uh, let's see if we can do a polygroup it. Again, I'm, I'm trading a little bit out of my element here. This is all stuff I, I, I had a passing... Um, make polymesh 3D here. Okay, so let's say if we want to, let's say, crease this... Uh, let's crease this here. Dynamic, apply, and let's just immediately just dynamesh this thing. So, polygroup it. Uh, if we go through here, and let's say use our Damien standard brush, and I guess we can actually turn Sculptor's Mode on for this. So again, you can poly paint. Um, and whatnot here. So if we go through here and just make some sort of design of stuff we want to um, modify or create polygroups from, go over to Z plugin and 
and uh, b -b -b polygroup it, and we'll say poly. Oh, you know what? I might have to do something weird with this window. Hold on. Uh, this one, we'll see. There we go. Okay, that fits. So here's the polygroup it window. And if we tap on here and we change that uh, that range, it'll go ahead and pick up on your surface area where these changes are, of course, and it'll maintain those functions as well. So you can go through here and you can quickly just start adding and changing the threshold basically on these groups here. And of course, it's looking at your edges as well. Um, if we go up here to, uh, we can grow and shrink and we can also just hit extend and that'll automatically extend to the borders here. So you can go through here and you can use poly paint, you can use geometry to maintain these borders here. And of course, if you're gonna use geometry, if you're gonna go through and sculpt first, uh, we go ahead and hit okay. I'm gonna say now we have uh, poly groups here. So you'd wanna make sure that these are nice and well-defined. The less differentiation you have between your angles, uh, it's gonna have a harder time picking those up. So make sure you go in here and don't do like I did, but go through and like really define where you want those things to go. Or alternatively, if we go here, you could just use poly paint. So even, eh, we'll, use, we'll keep this. Uh, but like we mentioned before with poly paint here, you can go through and let's say, you can get really, really nice lines because now we have poly paint here. So you can go through here and you can paint in where you want your polygroup it detail. And then, go back into polygroup it. And then we can do, um, let me think, uh, vertices, X, Y, Z, apply, symmetry, update, clear, shrink. Actually, you don't go into polygroup it just yet. You gotta go into polygroup it from paint, uh, borderless, and that'll go ahead and automatically just give you, let's turn off our lines here. You're gonna see, oops, it gives us our poly group and it doesn't have a border in between them. So it ignores what you painted, but it goes ahead and makes a poly group uh, here, right down the middle of where you painted. So you don't even need to go into poly group, that's even better. Um, the alternative to that one is if you want these borders built in, you just do um, poly group it from the paint with borders and then it'll go through here and give you a polygroup for this inside here, as well as that border you have. So now that you have that information, you can go through here with your geometry. Um, let's see what's something you could do with this. Panel loops, panel loops here, let's crank that thickness up. And then you can just go through and create, let's turn off our poly paint here. There you go. So now you can go through and make all the detailed stuff you want um, just using poly paint. So probably in my case, I would do poly group it borderless and just quickly go through, you know what, let's use something a little bit more interesting. Um, trying to think if I have something, uh, you know what, let's just throw in, what am I looking at here? Streaming, yeah, let's grab Earthworm Jim. So, for armor and stuff, if we have this body here and we duplicate this off, and let's go ahead and just hide this. So, if I wanted to do armor on this guy, and we can even have just super low subdivision, doesn't matter because what we're going to do is get our detail from, let's do shifty, there we go, uh, from the tessellation here. So, we're going to go into RGB. And we can just go through here and we can paint. Let's make this a little bit more obvious where we want these uh, panels to go. So instead of going through and sculpting or going through and masking, we can just go, you know what? I want a armor panel here. And I want another armor panel to go here. And maybe some more down here. Let's put in some spine stuff going on. Okay, so 
they got all that, we can hit Control W, make that all in polygroup. But because we have that polypaint here, we can just go over here, polygroup for paint with no border. That'll go through and put a polygroup right down the middle of those border lines that we have. So if you turn off line here, you're going to see there's our new polygroups. So if we turn off polypaint, you're going to see there's our new polygroups here. And now, um, you know, if we got the body and the other subtool here, we can just say, you know what, here's my panel information. Let's go ahead and do delete hidden. And then we'll go over here again to, let's make these one polygroup here. Control W. There you go. And you can zero mesh this if you want to first. Uh, we can just go right into panel loops here. And one thing we do want to do though is uh, crank up that polish and that thickness. You know what, maybe we do want to zero mesh this real quick. Give me a second. So let's go down here to again our masking border. Let's do a weld. That'll be geometry modified topology, weld topology. And then mask by border. There's some weird stuff going on in the middle where I don't think. Oh, you know what? In here, that's probably why. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if zero mesh handled that. Okay. That one might require some cleanup. Huh. I'll have to play with a little bit, a little bit with that one. But um, you can at least uh, go through and quickly make your polygroups and then extract that stuff off. Um, zero mesh that stuff. Do your panel loops, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but yeah, you're going to have to clean up these borders. I'll have to play with that a little bit more. Uh, is there any good way to merge two meshes together without entering DynaMesh for a test summate workflow? Example would be to attach the arms back in the body of organic sculpt. Yeah. Uh, well, off the top of my head, I think. Let's see if we can do that real quick. Let's delete that. Let's go back here. So, for example, if we're... Let's duplicate this one. And we'll delete higher. So, if we're using this one and we say we're using our snake hook and we want to put in you know, something that goes, that bridges from here to here. Um, of course, it's not going, these two things aren't going to meld together here. So let's go to inflate. We can inflate this up. And I can't get this thing to go back into this object. So one thing you can do um, off the top of my head is we can bridge these two things. So let's see if we go in here. Um, it's the easiest way to do this. You know what? Let's keep it simple. And we'll go to select lasso. And we can get rid of this here. And we'll delete hidden. Let's do an auto group. So I'm just going to get rid of that little inside thing. There you go. So now that we have, we can bridge these two things here, I think. So let's go to BC curve bridge, hold down shift. Hold down shift, and that'll go ahead and bridge those two things together. And now that those things are bridged, when we go in here to standard, we can hold down shift and smooth. And now these will all be one mesh. So you can not have to resort. I mean, or you can dynamesh it and then continue to sculpt. But if you don't want to resort to dynameshing, and you know, it doesn't even have to be, you don't have to go through there and make it that close. If you wanted to instead do like, I want to snake hook this. Then we'll go in here and inflate. So I've got a piece here that I want to bridge down here. Um, let's just go ahead and quickly, I'm going to do a trim curve. And we'll just get a polygroup for the, you know what, that's not going to play nicely. Let's at least give this a little bit of a downward turn. I mean, it'll play nicely fine. It's just not going to be a very good transition. So. If we have this and we use our trim, although, yeah, it's going to trim everything. Let's do visibility first, and then we'll do our slice curve, and then we'll delete hit and close holes. So we've got this geometry, and we want to bridge that down to here. We'll hit Control W, and now we can go here, just make basically two holes, delete hidden, and then again, that curve bridge. There you go. And now this is all one mesh, and then you can just go through here with Sculptress. And... There might be a more elegant way than that, um, but just off the top of my head, that would be one way to do it without resorting to DynaMesh.
cool. Uh, we get a new series, What's New in Zebras 2018, as it was in 4R8? Yeah, I just got to sit down and do it. It shouldn't take me too long, but um, yeah, I wanted to do it all last two weeks, but GDC and then Easter put me behind. Is there an easy way to get stitches, patterns, and piping? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do a video on that, too. I mean, I've, I've done it in these things before, but nothing I can point you to directly. It's basically using curves helper instead of just using the curve strap mode. And it's, it, you know, it's actually relevant here. So if you notice, let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, there was a number of ways I could have done this, but one way I did do this was um, I made these little rings on his head here. So if you watch the the speed sculpt, if you watch the, um, what do they call it, time lapse, um, what I basically did, let's turn off all the poly paint here, is you go through here, hold down control shift, I'm going to do a slice curve and I'm going to hit speed. Hold down control shift and spacebar. We're gonna say a brush radius. So as I'm slicing through, let's delete. Uh, you know what? Let's delete higher. There we go. So as we're slicing through, we're going to get a brush radius of geometry here. So I just basically went through and just sliced uh, where I wanted those rings to be. And then I went up here to select rectangle and I isolated them. Oops and then I deleted hidden. Now this isn't the geometry I'm really looking for, so what I'm gonna go down here is zero mesh, that size, size down to zero half, and we're just gonna clean these up a little bit, and you can just keep hitting half. I'm basically looking for just one uh, line down the middle. On this one, it's not going to, but we can simply go through here. We use our Z modeler brush and insert single edge loop. So now, we can now go through here, and we can do, um, let's see, poly group, poly loop, and we can just make two poly groups and I'm just going to do a poly loop poly group and then tap alt to get two different poly groups here and then when you go over here to your stroke menu you can go up here to uh, what am I looking for here um, frame so we're going to go down here to frame poly groups and then I'll go ahead and put a curve down the middle of this so Think of this technique as a way to do any sort of curves without having to go through here with spaghetti noodles and try and wrap it around a mesh or do anything specific. Um, and if you didn't want to do it down the middle, you could also just do it down the... Hold on. I need to turn that off. Always end up opening a bunch of things to these demos. And it makes my files quite large. Preferences. Quick save. Never. So now... If you go over here to border, uh, you can do that. Oh, creased edges too. We can we can do hair stuff as well. Um, but you can also frame those things. But we'll just frame polygroups for now. And then brush BC uh, curve tube. And then you can just go through here and you can drop drop a um, curve tube down that frame mesh here. And then if you want to keep that curve tube, you can do curve tube multi. So curve multi tube, or you can hit five. And then I'll go ahead and store a snapshot, basically. And then we'll go over here to our delete curve functions. And now we just need these tubes here. Delete hidden. And you can also go through here and you can inflate and deflate these things to get the right width that you need for those rings. Um, and of course, scale them out however you need. Now, there's also, let me see if I have it installed on 2018. I think I do. I think I do. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe I don't, but I thought I did. Hmm. I'm gonna need that. Um, I'll make you. I'll make you a better video than this. Uh, that'll go through Curve Helper, but it's basically. Let me just find it for you. Actually, you know what? Uh, my YouTube channel gonna be one of the I need to go through and do highlights too so much stuff I need to do um, let me just do a really quick search and see if I have it control 
controlling ZBrush curves. That was 11 months ago, so that's not going to be it. Framing mesh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Curves helper. All right, well, since I guess I need to install it again, let's do this. So, useful scripts for ZBrush 4R8. And of course, we're on 2018, but uh, there's Curves Helper here, and this will allow us to take a Z-Sphere chain and make curves out of it. So we're just going to download this. And then we're going to put this on our desktop. Uh, you know what? Let's do. Let's make this more obvious here. So, installing plugins. Well, installing this plugin. Extract here. And we're going to go to ZBrush. Program files, Pixel like ZBrush 2018, Z Startup, Z Plugs, and then. I could have sworn I had Curse Helper in here. So, where did that go? Wow, I'm losing my mind. Desktop. Okay, uh, Curves Helper, 7-zip, extract here, Curves Helper Z script. Where is that? I love when it does this. Desktop, date modified. There it is. So this one doesn't have a folder in it, so I think I can just move this here. And let's restart ZBrush. All right. Hard surface modeling in ZBrush. Um, do you typically work in another 3D application to block out the mesh? Can you do it all in ZBrush? I think about doing a weapon, but not a clue where to start. Oh boy, I've got a treat for you. Um, I got about 10 years worth of YouTube videos on exactly that topic. So go to my YouTube channel here. And uh, weapons specifically, uh, if you go to my playlist here, we do, uh, here's ZBrush 4 8 what's new, which has a lot of stuff. Uh, the sci-fi what Pistol series has a lot of stuff in it. Um, I've got a quick sculpt version of this rifle speed modeling and texturing in ZBrush. Um, if you go through like the ZBrush mech helmet concept sculpt or the mech helmet techniques, these are a little bit older, but they're still um, still relevant. But yeah, I do everything in ZBrush. I don't do anything in external programs anymore. Um, it's just slower, and you can use the modeler to do box modeling. You can do concept sculpting. If you want to do like Halo Armor, for example, you can go to my Station page and you can just do it all in ZBrush and then just rebuild as needed and use dynamic um, subdivisions and stuff like that and just make whatever you want to. And there's a ton of stuff on that on my, on my ArtStation YouTube channel, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the boot tutorial is also a good one too, just to walk you through the box modeling. And even though it's not necessarily hard surface modeling, um, it's still relevant to box modeling because I box model all my clothes or pouches and stuff like that and then just put wrinkles on at the very end. So the exact same way I would model a weapon uh, would be how I did that. And you know this guy's weapon here was all modeled 100% in ZBrush. For example. So we got that and do we get our Curves Helper? Z plugin. Curves Helper. Yeah. Okay. So for example let's load in our trusty Earthworm Jim. So if you wanted to put in a curve strap that was in a very specific area um, around him, this is where I would go into append z-sphere. Oops. I append something goes down to the bottom. So here's our z-sphere. And then we can hold down shift to make it the exact same size. And hold the, go to Q to draw mode. Whoops. 
and then we can just start making our Z sphere chain. We can hit, uh, let's go into transparency ghost. Let's hit Q and make some more resolution on here so we can make this curve instead of dealing with, um, I mean, you can go through and you can use uh, the curves functionality if you want to kind of wrangle them and lock start and lock end. There, there's ways you can control them and you can also, you know, slice through this mesh and use a frame mesh functionality, which we just went over. Um, but you can also use these because these are a lot more forgiving and you can also add as many Z spheres as you want. You're basically just making a chain of where you want the Z spheres to end up. And just by adding and uh, moving these things around, you can do put these curves wherever you want. If you want them to go away from the body, you can. If you want to rotate, uh, you can rotate along these individual ones, or you can rotate along the entire chain here. Same thing with moves, same thing with scale. Uh, but anyway, now that we've got our Z-Sphere chain here, all we got to do is use this Curves Helper, copy Z-Sphere chain, and then I'm just going to put in a null mesh here, and we will uh, create curve. And now we have a curve right down the middle of that Z-Sphere chain, so then it's just a simple matter of brush, insert, curve, and then you can just drop a curve scales or stitches or um, what was the one we were playing with earlier? Let's hit the M key here, this little necklace. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And with the new, and we can go ahead and hide that Z-sphere. So, and with that new functionality in ZBrush, if you uh, make this bigger or smaller, doesn't matter, and then you can hold down uh, control, you can now twist along a local axis there if you need to, and that'll just allow you to put your curves in more specific areas, and you can go through and move this and clean it up a little bit, but that'll get you 90% there. And piping would just be framing the mesh and stuff too. Uh, I'm standing right now at my standing desk. Um, if anybody else is interested in my workstation setup, um, Just had it. There we go. Here's, this is what I'm doing right now. My dog is outside going potty, but I'm standing right here and I'm using ZBrush on this much of my monitor. I got Restream IL right here. So you can go into the description of that video and you can see what's going on there. Um, masking and polygroup by mask. Uh, well, masking, there's not really, whoa, there's not really a difference in them. I might be way behind on my comments here. Hold on just a second. So on this one in particular, um, let's see, geometry. So uh, masking is just masking. Um, going in here to your polygroup menu, and you know, mask by polygroups will give you a polygroup. It's group mask, clear mask is technically what it's doing when you hit Control W. Um, if you go into your masking, no, your edge loops, geometry, edge loop, you can do edge loop mask border, and that'll put a cut line around your polygroups. That gives you a much nicer. Um, and polygroup by mask. So if you go down here to your polygroup menu, you have a mask here and you just do group masked or group mask clear mask, which is control W or like I showed before the edge loop thing. Oh, Gozi didn't point to the apprentice version. Um, that's a good point. I haven't tried it. I'll have to give that a shot. I'm not positive. Uh, in the meantime, like you said, use the FBX files. I'm not positive on the apprentice stuff. Cool. Uh, there should be a travel for this available on the Pixelogic website. Um, if you're making patterns on a vest, that one might be a better surface noise solution or nano mesh. Uh, for example, um, let me find that for you real quick. Go to my channel videos and Google fishnets. There you go.
and you can use nano mesh, micro mesh for that kind of detail. Uh, ZBrush is gradually starting to slow down after 50 million polygons. Do you have any solution for me? Some people work with 120 million, no problem. Oh, uh, they probably have some problems. 120 million is an awful lot. You can use HD sculpting to help you out as far as slowdowns, but I don't model anything. I don't have any one sub tool over about four and a half million ever. Just because I'm way too impatient for. I mean, and to be fair, 50 million polygons is a lot of polygons to work actually manipulate so the fact they're able to do that at all is pretty fantastic um life of steph says pixel z brush is it possible to zero mesh an asymmetrical model but have the zero mesh topology be the same on both sides of the model zero mesh it I think when you have zero mesh and you have symmetry turned on, it's only going to do it across. It, it is going to force you to be completely symmetrical. It's going to take one side, probably your negative axis, and flip it over. You can uh, <laughs> you can make your model symmetrical, zero mesh it, pose it, and use poseable symmetry to have sculptable symmetry across an a non-symmetrical mesh that has symmetrical topology. But zero mesh symmetrical, no. I think it's got to be. Uh, yeah, so I'm pretty much standing when I work on ZBrush all the time. If I'm ever working like all weekend, I'll lower my desk and sit down and stuff. But uh, it just to kind of switch it up. You know, I sit on my butt at work all day, which I have a standing desk at work too. But um, am I somehow connected with Russia? No, I think I'm Croatian. I think if you go back far enough, Pavlovic. Uh, I think they had the CH when my grandparents, great-grandparents came over to America. So I think I'm Croatian, but I'm not positive. Somebody else is going to have to do my family tree for me. Would you recommend the Houdini game dev kit for characters? Absolutely. I use it every day at work. Now, you might want to do a more of a zero mesher solution uh, to get nice animatable edge loops, um, and zero mesher is great at that. Um, but your mileage may vary, and it's just parameters too, so you can play around with the tools uh, and the settings within Houdini, or just use ZBrush to ZRemesh to get nice animatable edge loops. Um, but it also depends on your production, and if they're down for... You might have to just re it to my hand, is what I'm getting around to. Um, but if it's perfect for evaluation, so instead of doing weeks of work to get it into game and go, ah... This isn't right. We made mistakes. We were It looked great in ZBrush, but when we get it into game with the camera angles and the materials and running around and animation and effects and lighting, uh, turns out it's not as good as we thought it was. Looks great in ZBrush, doesn't look great in game. And that's not anything against ZBrush. That's just something against people evaluating things out of context. It's easy to evaluate something and go, hey, this, this, this silhouette, and this is my favorite thing in the world, um, you know, this front, this front A-frame pose of this character looks perfect, so get it in the game. And then, of course, you get it in the game with animation and bones and running around and uh, materials and lighting, etc., etc., and textures and color. And, and then you realize that beautiful silhouette that you slaved over, and it's like, oh my gosh, when I put the camera like this, this silhouette is perfect. And then you get him in the game running around, and it's like, oh, it's a completely... It, this this right here is absolutely meaningless. It's not absolutely meaningless. Uh, it doesn't hold as much weight as I guess art directors would like to think. And I would be inclined to say it's almost meaningless. Uh, what has meaning is evaluating in context and having it run around in game. And if you're working on FBS, shooting at it and motion blur and anything else you have, uh, getting it into a game quickly, and that's where the auto game dev tools come into play, is evaluating in context, as opposed to doing this for hours and going, oh, you know what? This lip, this lip right here needs to like do this. And you don't want you know these things, it can't be tan. And you know what? This needs to break that edge there. There we go, perfect. And you do that for three weeks. And then you get it in a game. And number one, you're gonna see it from back here, so nobody cares. And number two, uh, it's gonna be noisy. Um, number three, 
uh, the silhouette you were thinking that was so important because you're modeling like this all day, uh, it means nothing. That's a complete waste of your time. And also this perfect silhouette that you were maintaining in the concept or in your sculpt uh, means nothing when it's running around, obviously. It should be obvious, but it's not sometimes to some people. Let's see. Um, images. Okay, yeah, so if you're doing that, a polygroup, it, uh, so we're looking at this right here. Um, if you do the basic vest and then use polygroup it to put these things in where you want, that'll give you the polygroups here. Um, you can do a panel extraction or a Ziri mesh and then a panel loops. And then when you get those borders, so for example, let's take this one. And um, again, let's hold down lasso. So I'm gonna give this guy a little vest. Control W, delete hidden. And you know what? Let's also get rid of here. Ramp. Mask it out. And the more I use polygroups, the more I can't live without them. And that's why I don't really model in any other programs anymore is because I don't like using selection sets. I don't like making face selections over and over and over again. Uh, polygroups. Polygroups is where it's at. Sorry, every other program on the planet. So we're going to go through here, hit Control W, and then we're going to go to Delete Hidden, and then we're going to go down here to our masking border. Let's go ahead and grow that a little bit, invert that, and then again, polish by features. So we've got the start of our vest here. If we want to make any changes, we can go through here with our move brush, etc. And let's just do the front. So what I'm going to do is we're going to slice through here. And I mean, you can you can work on the front and the back separately. It's not a big deal. So we're going to go ahead and split this off. Um, and now we'll just do, just to make it, yeah, you don't have to do that. You can make it cleaner by zero meshing, but we'll skip that port. So um, you can go through here and you can mask and you can polygroup this thing. Or if you're just doing something specific, um, you can go through here and you can make these patterns and it goes like this and it goes like this. Now this is getting a little bit sloppy, so I'm going to clean this up. Um, and again, you can mask and do edge loop mask border to keep it cleaner as well. Um, but for now, what we're going to do is we want to keep this one here as a poly group. And then these here, let's say this one and this one as a poly group. And then these here. And if it was symmetrical, it would actually be a little bit easier. So we'll take these ones here. And then these ones here. Uh, you know what? I like that one. Uh, we'll take these here, here, here. And then here and here. Okay, so... These are polygroups here. Uh, when you go through here now, and you do, for example, edge loop, uh, panel loops, this will go ahead and give you the panel loops here. Let's go ahead and make those a little bit thicker. So that'll give you those splits that you're looking for. And then if you wanted to, and you know, feel free to, you know, I would probably, I would probably do this manually. Just for a little bit more control, what I'm thinking what I would do is use, uh, well, you could also use zero mesh here. So if we go to zero mesh, uh, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, and then the zero mesh this, uh, this will make it a little bit cleaner. So when you go through here, you can, for example, work on all of these separately. So if you wanted to work on like this piece here and this piece here, you could split these apart. And now we can go through here and we can do a extrude polygroup all and then just pull these in. Let's hit Control W, make these all the same. There we go. So you can pull this in, and then you're going to need to go down to Display Properties, Flip. It's way down here at the bottom. And then now that you have this information, if you just need to do piping, uh, you can bevel along here. You can go through here, and you can say, let's extrude this, and let's extrude this. So now, yes. Um, so now you've got this type of cloth going on, but if you wanted to put in piping around this or through this or with this, which all you need to do is isolate this and then do another um, stroke and curve frame border. So now you have a border around here. So if you wanted to add piping, it would just be like brush curve tube and then just add 
piping along there. And let's see if we can't, there we go. So let's go ahead and do a split mass points and we'll do a mirror, mirror and weld. Although, um, now that I think about it, the reason why is because we're not symmetrical. I always work symmetrically. Let's delete that. So anyway, um, let's try that again. So again, we're gonna go over here to frame our open border. Uh, you can also frame polygroup, but I had a bunch of polygroups there. And then we're gonna go in here to our curve tube and then we're gonna hit five and we're gonna do another curve tube over here and then tap off. And now we have this curve tube and this curve tube as our piping, split mass, uh, split hidden. There we go. So now if we turn off his body here, we have uh, this geometry here with our uh, modeling, then we got the piping inside of that. So that's just an easier way to get that kind of detail. Let's turn this off. There we go. So all that detail here. And if you wanted to, you could also, since this is a round object, you could inflate and deflate this as much as you need to. So if you need to make that more or less uh, apparent, feel free to do that. that Makes sense? <laughs> I mean, I might be Russian. I don't know. Who knows? It's all a, it's all a mystery. Yeah, good luck retopologizing my hand. It's not fun. I agree. Um, you can also use Zero Mesher. If you go to my YouTube channel, um, you can use... This would be Z Sphere Z Remesh. Here's a bunch of examples of me using Z Remesher with Z Spheres. Uh, this one specifically, Z Sphere Topology Cleanup. So you can check that out, and that might save you a little bit of time. So you don't have to do every point by hand. You can do, you can let Z Remesher do the bulk of the work, and then go through and clean up what you need to. Is there a difference between using Dynamesh and Z Remesher compared to those using those same features in the Gizmo. Um, well, Dynamesh is different than Z Remesher. If we go here, let's see. Oh, we have this backplate too. So this. Oh, you know what? Speaking of Z Remesh. Um, Let's take this, let's clone this off. And let's go through here. So, uh, like we were mentioning before, if I go through here and I want to sculpt on this thing, we delete lower, I can hold down shift and with sculptor's mode turned on, we can go through here and we can retestlate this object. And if we sculpt this out, these two things are never going to um, merge together. However, if we go through here and we dynamesh this, those will stick together. So that's, and that's a good feature because now that we've Dynamesh this and now we use Sculptress, uh, those things are now stuck together. So you can use that as a way to stick things together if you need to, or to use the curve mode like we went over earlier. Um, what was the question? Uh, is Dynamesh and Zero Mesher? Yeah, so now this thing is Dynamesh. So when you get in here, hold on. You're gonna see as we're Dynameshing at different resolutions, it's just giving me a, a um, overall, um, Dynamesh resolution, how you know these squares are going all over the place. Now there is a tessa, tessa, tessimate. There is tessimate down here, so you can change the polygon size down here on the fly. So as we tessimate smaller, think of those as um, the tess tessellation resolution getting smaller. So you can actually tessimate this entire thing um, as you go as opposed to dynameshing. So again, if you don't want things to stick together, this may be your best bet as far as decimating or dynameshing, decimating at a lower resolution. Um, and then you can go through here and sculpt as much as you need to, like so. Um, but yeah, and then if you wanted to Z-remesh this, uh, instead of going in here and Z-remeshing, you can hit uh, W, go into your gear here, and you can do uh, remesh by Dynamesh here, or you can do remesh by decimation, remesh by Z-remesher. So you click this, uh, you're gonna have a little poll here that says target polygon count of 52. Let's say we wanna do, uh, I don't know, 50. And then we can Z-remesh this, and then this is be your X, Y, and Z symmetry. Um, so you can use the deformers to quickly zero mesh your stuff as opposed to um, going to the zero mesh menu. 
Uh, so you need to be mandatory. I'm a super broke student, barely got the money for ZBrush. Um, well, if you're a student, uh, you can use just use Apprentice, or if you're... I mean, I'm not trying to make a Pixel Lighters channel. I mean, it's it's cheap. You don't, you can get the uh, indie version for like $250 a year. Uh, three axes and ZBrush pointing towards the positive direction. When I use Gizmo to move the object towards along the axis, the number of Gizmos says I need move the negative direction. Um, if you have your floor turned on, your floor will always should always point you uh, the Z forward. This blue one is always Z positive and then negative and well, that's not true because this is X negative but this is Z positive and then Y positive. So X is actually going negative, I believe. Hold on, let me make sure I'm not lying. Uh, so if we go in here to our trusty sphere and make polymesh 3D and we have uh, standard brush turned on and sculpture mode turned on and we have X symmetry turned on. So here is our little face here. There we go. Um, so we are Z forward. Now, uh, yeah, this is negative X and this is positive X. So, but when we have our gizmo on, this should be positive. Um, but yeah, it's saying it's going in a negative direction. I'm not flipped upside down, am I? No, why up? Good catch. I don't know. <laughs> uh, never noticed that before. Hmm, interesting. Uh, any plans for Pixelogic to have a VR UI? Uh, I don't know. You'd have to ask. A, I'm, uh, by the way, I'm not a Pixelogic person. I don't work for Pixelogic at all. I'm just an enthusiastic young man about Pixelogic, although I'm not such a young man anymore. Uh, how can you prevent spirals coming out of Z remeshed models? It should do it by default. Um, but if you want total control over that, what I would do. Uh, it, it's it does a pretty good job now about not putting in spirals, but if you want to, I would put in um, areas where you want these things. So as you're zero meshing this thing, um, you're either doing that or you're going B Z zero mesher guides and putting these things in, or framing your mesh with zero mesher guides. But uh, if we were to say zero mesh this target plugin kind of five down size down. Zero mesher, keep groups, smooth groups is fine. So if we zero mesh this thing, um, there shouldn't be any spirals in this area. They've gotten better at that. This one might be iffy because of the little end end piece here, but we'll see. Let's turn off our floor too. Okay, so hold on, Control Shift. Let's go into Select Lasso. Yeah, so these are all these are all fine. These are all fine, so it should it shouldn't do spirals. Um, I, that's I mean I'm sure in some case there there we go. So in this case, bring my laptop to work, everybody. Um, in this case, because it's going down here and resolving this end, it does uh, result in a spiral. So in this case, what I would do is maybe just cap this thing. Let's go ahead and like slice this little piece off here. So now let's go ahead, you know what, we want it a little bit lower, so we'll zero mesh half, keep groups. So now when we go through here, hopefully, um, yeah, so now this one doesn't have any spirals because we put a little cap on here and then these ones should all be fine still. There we go, so maybe use that to kind of control. Um, okay. Uh, posing characters. You ever use another program to post characters? That's because I really don't like using Gizmo or Transpose tool to post characters. Very time consuming. Um, possibly not as time consuming as what I do posing characters externally from ZBrush, which is rigging, weighting, corrective blend shapes, uh, blend shapes, and getting all of that to work externally. Um, so you can either move something and correct the sculpt there, or you can rig it and then have a whole army of people rigging and waiting for you. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, wait, I don't have a really good example. 
I don't have a magic um, solution for that necessarily. It would just be, I mean, you can use these spheres for rigging if you want to. Uh, I think I've got that on my, let me see. If not, I need to add that to my list of things. Yeah, you know, we can talk about it. We can talk about it. Um, can we do this one? Okay, so for example, let's say I want to go to um, transpose master. We're going to t-pose this mesh. Hopefully, uh, I have subdivisions on all these things. I might not on the. I don't think I do on the gun. That might be a little heavy. Okay, so uh, we've dropped from all these subtools down into one subtool here with our lowest subdivision levels active. So now if we go through here and we hold down mask, we can go through and we can mask, say this, control tap to blur that out. And then if I want to um, go through here and like change the pose on his arm, I can do that. I can make his arm go down a little bit here. Now, of course, when I do that, you're going to need to go through here and make your corrections as needed on your sculpt, but hopefully it's not too painful. So we've changed that, and let's go ahead and say, let's mask here, blur the mask. You can actually go to go to Unmash Mesh Center if you want to, but in this case, I'm going to put it down here where this is. We can kind of like move this around, change that pose a little bit, or also rotate that around. Um, I guess we don't need. So you can do that. Um, oh yeah, Z-Sphere posing. Uh, in this case, might not be the best example, but we can um, use these spheres to pose. So if we take this posing that we've done and we go to um, Transpose Mesh, Transpose Subtools. So it'll go through here and it'll move all my subtools in that direction. Wait for it. Cool. So now I've got my new pose on here. Um, but when you go through here, you can actually do, um, you can say, hey, I want to use a Z-Sphere rig for creating this pose. So we can turn on Z-Sphere rig and then go back in the transpose mesh. And that'll put a Z-Sphere in the scene that we can make a rig with. So here's our uh, Z-Sphere. So I'm going to hit Q and then we can go through here and start making a skeleton, like so. So now if I want to um, pose this one out, uh, let me see, I've got this skeleton here. And if we go all the way down here, we're going to see underneath rigging. Um, we'll hit bind mesh. And then I'll go ahead and bind my mesh to my Z sphere rig. So now when I rotate this thing, wait for it. This one might, again, this one might be a little bit heavy for this. Let me see. Or I could be doing this completely wrong. Let me see. Rig this, T pose mesh. You know what? I might be doing this wrong. Let's 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 make this a little bit easier on ourselves. Demo soldier. So for instance, insert. You can use transpose to do this as well, but we'll keep this simple. Uh, transparency, and again, you can you can tell the stuff I don't do very often. Here, put one up to his head. down his arm, like so. And then, uh, I guess we're probably going to have to clone this off. So let's clone that off, go to our Z-Sphere here. Let's go down here to Rigging, say Select Mesh. We'll select that Clone Mesh, and then Bind the Mesh. And then if I go into Solo Mode here, Rigging, go out of Solo Mode, OK. So now when we rotate this, you're going to see we can rotate the arms. 
Um, and we can rotate the body using Z spheres. Now, as I'm rotating this arm, there's not a really a way to paint weights in here. So it's like, okay, it's gonna take this with us. So at that in that case, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna unbind the mesh and we'll go in here and we'll put in a little helper mesh and this is going to weight this section to that bone. So now I'll bind that mesh again. And now when we rotate, it'll leave that behind because this section is now weighted to the end of that. So you can go through here and you can kind of do weighting with your Z-spheres. I don't know if that's better or faster for you, but... Uh, save to delete the contents of user, public documents, ZBrush data, external renderer. Oh yeah, if that's filling full of stuff. That might be when you send stuff over to Keyshot, it might dump temp files in there. Um, I think so. <laughs> don't quote me on that in case you break something. Uh, possible to use Sculpture Pro for VDM brush creation? No, but you can use Project Primitives if you're careful. Uh, yeah, because when you're doing VDMs, it has to go back to that um, plane, but if you ever change the topology of that plane, it breaks the VDM functionality. Because uh, it goes back to a square. When making a screaming face, how do you successfully mask the lower jaw and lip? Um, that one I would probably do, let's see, let's delete that. If you hold down, well, I would make a polygroup for it, but if you hold down a control and drag, that'll drag along the topology of your object. So now if I hit control W, that'll give me a polygroup for this upper face. Uh, but if I don't do that, I can mask just the jaw out like this. There you go. So now I can go through here and I can like rotate just the jaw, although there's not a huge mouth bag in there, so that's problematic, but you can hit Control W to make that a polygroup to make it a little bit easier to select later on. In fact, you can hit W and Control tap that one, and now you'll always have access to that palette group. It'll automatically mask it for you. Uh, I am responding to earlier questions in this chat. I'm I'm growing through quickly. Oh, you know what? Let me think. Let me go to the Pixel Logic live now. Okay, sorry, I'm missing all the YouTube comments. No, no YouTube comments are coming in here. Here we go. Restream comments. Yes, and um, yeah, so I'm, I should be getting Twitch and I should be getting uh, YouTube. Um, damn, Michael, your skill level is something off the chart. You taught you that yourself. Uh, <laughs> I guess I did. I didn't take any classes on ZBrush. Just reading the documents and using it. And then uh, now on YouTube watching videos, I'll watch uh, Joseph Dress, Paul Gabry. Uh, make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, and also everybody else on the Pixelogic streams as well. If you, again, if you go to the Pixelogic channel, I'll link you guys there real quick. Wait for it. Uh, there we go. Go here. And there's a ton of really far more talented people than I am doing really cool stuff on there. Deformers examples, yeah, we go through that. Uh, Z sphere scales and legs for me, yeah. And it's depending on the density of your mesh, uh, it'll be a little bit harder. Uh, issues with the mouse because of the weird shape. Can you tell me how you did his mouth to make his head look so awesome? Um, I can kind of walk you through it. Uh, I don't. Maybe I'll post a slower video or we can do like a walkthrough. Uh, basically all I did, if I remember correctly, and I have video um, proof of it. Let's see if we can do this. Let's walk through it real quick. So for example, uh, I'm gonna go over here, speed 0.25x, and we're gonna slow it down just a bit because when we get to the head, um, and again, I just did a really, so this is the um, Sculptress Pro, just pulling it out along the exact shape of the uh, Earthworm Gym Head from Spotlight. And then going in here with um, Project Primitive and putting in the eyeball shapes, you can use insert meshes for that and Dynamesh if you want to, it's not a big deal. And then, um, I think I just pushed these points around. Uh, oh no, I, I put in the basic shape of that mouth and then dynameshed it in, or I use I might have used Project Primitive for that as well, just to get that kind of, like you said, that weird shape. 
and then just went in and I think I just scooped it out. Yeah, brute forced it. Nothing really elegant going on there. I just brute, for, brute forced out his mouth and then I dropped in some um, project primitive teeth shapes in there with a little bit of taper. And then zero meshed it and then started doing a little bit of box modeling on his head. So nothing super magical. The new Pepsi button is Sculptures Pro. <laughs> um, let's see. How can I manage my quick save directory? I haven't seen it in a light box on the official Pixel stream. I can't find it when I open my light box. Uh oh. So hit the comma key, quick save. Here's where all your quick saves should be. Um, if you click on any one of these, you're going to see uh, where that folder is. And if you go to that folder, it's just going to take your quick saves. But you can go to, for example, that's ZBrush Data 2018. So I have ZBrush Data 2018 here. Uh, there's your quick save folder, and all your quick saves should be in here. Now your quick save counters in here, and also ZBrush Quick Save Path. You can go in through here and you can edit this path if you want to, I think. I don't do that, but that should be where it is. Cool. Um, all right, last five minutes. We might have to save project all the deformers for next time, but that'll give me something to do. Uh, responsibilities environment artist. Kind of depends on where you work. It can go from anywhere from just props and stuff to terrain and skyboxes uh, and everything in between. Although I guess that would be a separate discipline, but if you're a smaller studio environment artist, you do a lot. You do a lot of stuff I'm not really good at. I'm more of a sandbox character, vehicle, weapon type guy. Cool. So when attempting to grab the lower lip, is there a way to select using normals or is it just trial and error? Um, can you select along a normal? In your move brush properties, um, hold on. So in here and under move, uh, if you go to brushes, you have the auto masking available. And then if you go to like move topological, that'll just grab a lot. This is a bad example. Uh, let's grab this one. Something with a mouth bag in it. So now with this one uh, with move topological turned on and the range turned down. You can go through here and move these lips. Um, it's moving along a surface normally you can do with like, let's see if we can try maybe doing a, um, let's see, poly group, poly loop. So if I have a poly group here, I can do Q mesh or I can do an extrude poly group ball. And then if I hold down shift, that pushes along a surface normal. So you can maybe use that. Cool. All right, everybody, I'm going to have to sign out. Sorry on Facebook if I, I don't, I might have missed some comments there. It's kind of hard to tell. It's, I think a lot of the comments are from another video. And then on uh, YouTube and Twitch, I should have had you on Discord. I'm going to have to figure out why I can't log into Discord. I have my two-factor authentication, and it's not taking my code. So anyway, thanks, everybody. Um, I'm not going to be on the Pixel Edit channel for a while. I'm going to be out, but I think I come back. Uh, look on their scheduling. I think I'm back on the 24th. Ooh, man, that's a long time. Um, I should be on my channel on Thursdays barring any unforeseen circumstances, so maybe we'll get some stuff done there. Cool, thanks everybody, and have a good rest of your week.